Hi, I'm back here again in Google Sheets with another video. This video follows closely on from the previous video where I demonstrated the CRM system that I built in Google Sheets and how it works. In this video and probably a couple of subsequent videos, I'm going to be talking about all of the things that actually go into it to make it do the things that it does. I'm going to start here on the main sheet. Um, you can set this up however you like. You might like to have more information in these columns here or you might like to have more space up the top for whatever information you need to populate that with. I've only got four rows frozen. Um, those rows will follow me wherever I scroll on the sheet. They'll always be fixed to the top. And you can do that by simply highlighting the row that you want to freeze up to, say seven, clicking on view, and then freeze up to current row. And now all of the rows seven and above, or seven and below, will actually follow me wherever I scroll. Just reset that one. Like I said, you might like to have additional columns here for maybe the phone number of the contact here, or whatever is particular to your, um, your requirements there. The other important element is this data validation cell here. So I'm going to demonstrate how that works as well. First of all, I'm going to grab a set of cells here and I'm going to merge them just using the merge buttons up here. And now that will behave as a single cell. To add some data validation in there, you can right click on the cell scroll down to data validation and you'll just want to list from a range. You want to specify the range that we're looking at. Um, if you're looking at a range that's on the same sheet that your data validation is on, you don't ne need to specify the sheet, but you can if you want to. So I really just need from B5 to B 200 and this will be ticked by default that's what you want you want to see a drop down and save your changes and now you have a data validation drop down the next part that I'll look at is this cell up here the reason that I've got a separate cell up here rather than just using the data validation is that Data validation as it stands doesn't actually copy hyperlinks. Um, it'll only copy the actual text or, or the, the string that's in that cell. So that, that word there, bailing up, does not behave as a hyperlink. I'm sure there is a way to make that behave as a hyperlink. I haven't come across a simple way to do that yet. Um, perhaps I will in the future. In any case, I've got another cell up the top here, which uses a formula this one here and I'll paste the formula in here and I'll show you how that formula works. First of all you've got an if error that will capture any errors where there is no data to show and it simply won't show anything rather than showing the actual error in the cell. The second part is it's using VLOOKUP, vertical lookup and we're specifying first of all a cell to start looking for data so D4 um, I actually want to make that D21. And then we're specifying the range that we're looking at in a dictionary style um, format. So that's B5 to B350, which is the correct range. The next part is uh, one that specifies how many columns across to look for the relevant data. Um, and using this, you can use it, uh, you can make it behave kind of like a dictionary lookup. Um, and it's pretty handy in doing that if you need to look up data in an ad adjacent cell. So now both of these cells are blank, but if I were to populate this guy here, you'll see that it also populates this cell with the hyperlinked data. Now, if you had perhaps uh, phone numbers down the side here,
you could use a VLOOKUP function to get the phone number as well. So I'll demonstrate how that would work. I'll make another cell over here. So I'm essentially going to copy this same formula here. There are a couple of things that we need to change about it. Paste that into that cell and merge them. So the first thing we need to change is the range is now extended. So we're not looking from B5 to B350. We're looking at B5 to C350. And that encompasses this range with all the phone numbers in it. We also want to specify which column in that range we're looking at. So we're not looking at the first column. We're looking at the second column. There we go. Now when you change the data validation string here, you'll not only get the name of the client, but you'll also get the phone number, whatever is adjacent to that particular client's name. Okay, so that's data validation. Um, there's not much else going on on this sheet. I do have some uh, color-coded cells here. No real reason for that. I just like the way it looks. And you could protect this range here if you wanted to so that these cannot be easily overwritten. We'll be using range protection quite a lot, so I'll show you how to do that now. First of all, just click on the cell that you uh, want to start from, and then the cell that you want to end on. You've, you've selected a range of cells. If you right-click on any of them and navigate down to Protect Range, You've got a little sidebar here where you can specify what kind of permissions you want to put in. Generally, I use this one. You can still edit that cell if you want to. However, it's going to warn you that, hey, you're trying to do something um, that we don't necessarily want to do. Are you sure you want to do it? So now if I try to overwrite something there, I'll get a warning. And if you are going through and editing a bunch of cells, you might like to tick the box that says don't show this again for five minutes. And then you can work without being interrupted every single time you, you change a cell's value. Okay, so we've covered data validation using the drop down. We've covered uh, using the VLOOKUP function, as well as the dictionary style usage of VLOOKUP. And we've also protected a range of cells so that they cannot be easily edited. In the next video, we'll take a closer look at how the actual client data sheet is set up, as well as the call history log. That does involve a little bit of JavaScript, so we can take a look at that, and that should be fun. I hope that's been helpful for you, and I hope you've learned a few things there. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.